Okay, now we have the last talk of today. Um, Fabius will tell us about adaptive OT with access control from lattice assumptions. Please. So thank you for this introduction. So let me first start by uh, giving you an example. So let us imagine that we are a resource center and we are working on, uh, on, DNA, on DNA database. So it, it, it has a little problem is that uh, DNA databases are quite huge data to store. So we want to outsource this, uh, for instance, in the cloud. But then we, we have other problems because uh, not only the database itself is uh, some sensitive data, but also the queries. Because if, for instance, we access, um, if the resource center access a sample many times, it, it may give information about uh, this specific sample. For instance, if it has a disease that the resource center is working on. So we also want uh, query and query and uh, query and use transfer. And as I said, also uh, also database security, which means that uh, uh, uncorrect uh, entries should remain uh, hidden. So this is exactly what we what we call the obvious transfer. So it's a two-party protocol which uh, which divides into into two, two sets. So an initialization phase and a transfer phase. So at the end of the of the first phase, the receiver uh, gets uh, next to the version of the database, and after the transfer phase, it should obtain the, uh, the message it wants, and the database, uh, the, the database holder, the sender, should not learn any information. So it's in, it's interesting to work on because uh, first of all, it's a uh, it's uh, what we call the complete building box for cryptography, meaning that if we are manage to provide efficient obvious transfer, we also obtain the multi-party computation, a secure multi-party computation for any functions. And um, also uh, the adaptive setting, which is uh, the settings where queries are, um, I mean, where queries may, uh, may, may depend on the previous uh, previous, uh, or previous queries, um, is uh, is, uh, is useful for sensitive databases like I said, that uh, DNA storage, but also financial data. So this history started in uh, 1981 by um, introduction of the concept by uh, by Rabin, and uh, then uh, some work that have been done on it, for instance, extension by Evan Goldreich and uh, Lempen, and, so, and also um, to prove that it's a complete building, building block for cryptography. And further, um, on adaptive obvious transfer, many works have been done. So, for instance, uh, it has been introduced in 1999, and um, the uh, assisted description fra uh, framework paradigm has been uh, introduced in 2007, and um, we and we, we use it uh, in our work, as I will explain later. Also, um, also in the universal computability, some um, some work have been done, but under uh, Q type uh, under, under uh, Q type assumption on pairings, and uh, also and then I've been improving some and yeah, and, yeah. and also access control uh, have been uh, enabled in uh, nine, nine, two thousand nine, and um, it's uh, so this work relies on also on uh, on other pairing assumption. And there is uh, another gener generic, way gener generic way to obtain it, but it relies on the, the full power of FHC in order to, to work. So the purpose of this work is to provide uh, the first uh, fully simulatable uh, adaptive obvious transfer from simple lattice assumptions, which are uh, sh uh, short integral solution and uh, LWE, which are two standard um, and well-known uh, lattice assumptions where small integral solution is um, so solving, a, solving a, a linear system with a, an infinite but a small and integral solution for this linear system, non zero. And learning with error is the indistinguishability of this uh, distribution with respect to the uniform one. So, as I said, our, um, our, our scheme is pro is pro secure in the full uh, simulation uh, setting. So, what is it? So, it's a variant of the universal compatibility uh, model. So basically, the difference with um, with uh, in the, with indistinguishability based uh, security model is that instead of just having uh, the, uh, instead, of, instead of just comparing the views of the adversary, we will uh, replace the adversary in uh, an ideal world by uh, an ideal functionality. And um, what we want is that uh, the view of the environment uh, remains the same in both uh, in both settings. Which means that the adversary cannot do more than what the functionality allows it to do. So now, <coughs> let let me 
let us go on to the, the construction. So we use, as I said, the CSS decryption technique, which is basically um, the uh, which basically lets uh, I mean the receiver gets the sender to obviously um, decrypt a, a message. So in our setting, how it works is that uh, the re the receiver will uh, will uh, sample a, a, a mask for one time band and we randomize uh, one of the ciphertext so that uh, such that it uh, now contains an encryption of this one time band. And then once the sender decrypts it, uh, decrypts it, uh, the thing is that it obtains um, it, obta it obtains only the the um, one time band version. So with the mask, it can, it can uh, guess which message it is. And then the receiver can remove the mask and obtain the message it wants. So on top of it, we also need a zero knowledge proof to, to make it secure. So we need to, first of all the proof that um, the sender here decrypts uh, uh, a legal ciphertext. So we need that the receiver will prove to the sender that it uh, that this is indeed a randomization of the cor of the correct uh, message in the, in the database. This is, the, this is done by proof of knowledge of a signature of one of the messages. And also, the sender has to prove the uh, to the receiver that it indeed uh, made a correct decryption. So, so to, to do this, we need a uh, uh, PKE which is compatible with uh, with zero knowledge proofs. So, to do that, we will use uh, the primary radius crypto system, uh, as I described here. So, here there is nothing new except that we will use the security version just to make our proof a little bit simpler, and uh, zero, and we use. Uh, a stern like uh, proof for this, but I believe, and this later on. So, but this technique made, uh, has some problem because if we just use this regex uh, encryption uh, in order to make our, our proof that it has been, for instance, correctly encrypted, the only thing we can prove is that uh, we prove that we use a bounded noise for this uh, regex encryption, which which uh, leads us to this for instance, for example, attack scenario, scenario. So basically, if uh, we imagine that we have a database composed of two messages. Uh, and zero and one, and the sender is malicious. It will encrypt the first message with a small noise and the second message with a noise close to the to the bound. And uh, once we're setting the randomization, as I described in the previous slide, um, it it will leak uh, information on um, on the norm of x i plus e. So, for instance, if this if this norm is quite small, we can imagine that it's, it's uh, m zero, which has been uh, randomized, and if it's quite big. It will, mean, it will mean that it's M1 which has been uh, encrypted. So, in this, set, I mean, just doing like this is not enough to to obtain the sec our security properties. So, to 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 overcome this problem, we just we use what we call what is called uh, uh, smudging or our folding, where, where basically we had a, a noise which is uh, bigger than the than the bound on the LW distribution on the on the R distribution, which which is here. Uh, which will be here super preliminary, super preliminary bigger, and um, it will lead, it will lead to some problems that I will uh, explain later. But it's a solution which works. So now on uh, on access control, what, what has been done? So basically, what we what we had uh, what we had previously, and in from this we had uh, an access control policy on the uh, ciphertext, and then the receiver has to has to prove that it possesses a, a valid certificate to access this. Uh, I mean. So, uh, a given message. So many works have been done before uh, on this. So some works works only with uh, with conjunctions, and then uh, this junction can be obtained from uh, replication plus zero knowledge proof that it's indeed uh, the same message that has been uh, that is uh, that underlies uh, different access policies. But it's not very efficient in some cases. Like, like for instance, uh, for instance, for threshold policies, because uh, there we have we have uh, many. Uh, Many disjunctions, and uh, it may prove useful, for instance, for biometric access or stuff like that. And also, um, there is uh, some solution use, use the, uh, which handle uh, expressive uh, policy, so namely NC1, but it uses um, so I mean a fully secure AD to do this, which is also some kind of costly to have to obtain nowadays. And um, some other works you um, allows hidden policy, but Use a, a restricted version of, of CNF uh, of the connected normal form, and in our work we use uh, branching programs to handle access policy. So, a branching program is a succession of different uh, different levels with two different permutations in between all those levels, and a function that that that, um, 
that map uh, a bit of the input to a level. So for instance, here if it, for instance, uh, we, here this word is accepted because it, um, it ends in the, it starts at, uh, at zero in the first level and ends at zero in the last level. But this word is not, because it ends at three in the last level. And why we use, we use this, um, this structure? It's because it's, um, it's uh, equivalent, um, if we have a pretty many long uh, branching program, thanks to Barrington, uh, we have also, we, we have the same proximity as NC1. And uh, so now, what we want to do is to prove that we possess a certificate X for some hidden branching program in, uh, in this list. And uh, to do this, we will we, we use uh, stern like uh, arguments of knowledge. So it works fine because when we look at uh, the representation of a branching program, except for the function that maps the bit of the input to the level of the branching program, everything is between zero, 0 and 4. So what you have to do is just to take this uh, binary, uh, binary representation, and we have a, sh a short vector here to which we, we may prove, uh, <coughs> prove knowledge. And plus, we have to prove that we evaluate it uh, step by step. And uh, to do this, we have basically two ways to do it. So either we can prove uh, that at each step, that, I mean, we, at, at each step we may prove the knowledge of, of this uh, x bar theta in a linear manner, or what we did is to, to reuse the result from zero net, zero net accumulator from uh, Ling and other, uh, Liebert and other, uh, which, um, which basically, we, instead of uh, doing this linear search, we do a binary search, which because uh, which uh, drop down the communication complexity from kappa, I mean, this factor kappa to log kappa. And this is done in, uh, in this, uh, this manner, using Merkle tree, where basically to prove that the knowledge of this, uh, this uh, x bar theta, we just we prove the knowledge of a path in the, in the tree, which leads to, to this uh, to commitment to this uh, x, uh, x bar theta. So, the thing is that in, uh, in the lattice setting, I mean, as I said, we use um, we use a stern like stern, uh, stern like uh, argument of knowledge because there is something that I mean, there is no equivalent of I mean, there is no non interactive and um, and uh, expressive uh, zero knowledge proofs. So basically, there is no equivalent of uh, gross side proofs because lattices has less uh, less structure than than pairing proof. So nowadays, what what is uh, what is the state of the art? You have basically two main proof systems, two different fami two families. So there are the Lubachevsky-like uh, proof system, which are Schnorr-like proofs on, uh, on ring and double ring, which are uh, quite efficient and takes advantage of, this algebra, of the algebraic structure of, of, uh, that the ring setting offers, but they are not quite expressive. On the other hand, we have the stern like proof, where it uh, works for any uh, LW, uh, I mean for standard lattices, but, but are combinatorial, so they are heavy but we can prove uh, many stuff with it. So how does it work? So initially it was a zero uh, proof for uh, syndrome decoding problem, which is uh, basically a uh, inhomogeneous in short integral solution, but instead of uh, proving knowledge of uh, short x, we prove knowledge of an x, such that its adding weight is fixed, and it's all in the binary setting. And some work from, from Kawashi and others allows to go from uh, modulo 2 to modulo q. And other works from um, from Ling and, and uh, others uh, allows to extend this to standard uh, SIS and LW statements. And uh, for the last um, past two years, uh, ma many works have been done to to improve improve the expressivity of uh, terms like uh, zero knowledge arguments and uh, use them in different protocols. So one of these uh, works leads to a signature reception protocol, which is. Um, which is, which is basically a signature, uh, a signature scheme with, component, with two component protocols, which are, uh, first of all, the two-party protocol, which allows to sign on the committed value at the end of the protocol, and the proof of no, uh, and the zero knowledge proof that allows us to prove possession of a signature in a zero knowledge manner. And the security of, uh, of this scheme is important and for ability of the signature, security of both protocol, and uh, also anonymity, which comes from the zero knowledge proof. And, um, it's uh, interesting in, uh, in many privacy-based protocols because, uh, I mean, for instance, in, it allows to enable eCache or uh, and, and also anonymous credentials. And uh, as I said before, we use for this uh, a construction which has been presented in uh, last year for 
the signatures. So now let us go into our constructions, which uh, basically uses everything uh, I presented uh, earlier. So the assisted decryption techniques from um, uh, a simplification of, this, uh, of our signature. We handle access control using a branching program and we use this uh, zero knowledge proof uh, in the standard question. So, first of all, in the initi initiation phase, we have everything uh, I presented, like the signature scheme uh, I talked with Asian protocols here. Uh, we use this regret, uh, I mean, we use the regret and encryption scheme and uh, encrypt everything plus sign everything. And then, we send, and, and then the sender sends everything to the receiver at the end of the initialization phase and uh, prove that everything has been done correctly. Then we enter this uh, transfer phase where the receiver wants to access uh, this message uh, row i and row i. So to do this, it, uh, it samples its one time pad. We randomize uh, the, the message using the smudging, I mean, adding the, this uh, floating term, uh, sends everything to the sender and prove that it indeed uh, knows uh, sigma row i for one of, this, uh, one of the messages without revealing which one. Then the sender decrypts it and proves that it's in, it, it, it indeed uh, did a correct decryption, also using this uh, signature reception block, I mean, also using the component protocol, and then uh, the receiver gets the message it wants. So I didn't talk about access control, but it can be, uh, I won't detail it, but it can be plugged uh, easily into the scheme using techniques I, I uh, presented before. And uh, also another improvement that can be done is, uh, it is to, I mean, we can earn a little bit on the um, communication cost using uh, oh, using uh, a uh, transform to optimize, um, to, I mean, to go to, to use an interactive zero knowledge proof instead of interactive proofs and win some the, on the communication cost on the round uh, number of rounds. So in the end, what we got is uh, the first uh, uh, adaptive OT with access control, uh, which handle uh, expressive statements, which relies on this LWE with uh, super polygon modulus, which is uh, yeah, which we, which we want to avoid. I mean, we want to avoid this, uh, this modeling techniques in order to work with standard LWE with polygon <coughs> size mod mod modulus. Module. And uh, also, security proof have, have been done in the in a full simulation based model. So what can be some open questions? So I said avoid the, the smudging to work with uh, normal LWE here. We can still improve efficiency. And another interesting question is, um, is to try to handle uh, any circuit policy in this setting. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. We definitely have time for that. Mm, so maybe I've asked one. Um, so um, let me get a basic question first. So do you need to download the whole database first? So yes, um, it actually it's, uh, it's normal in the in the obvious sample setting, it's, uh, it has this initialization phase, which um, which has a linear cost, where in the side of the database, because in the end, what we want to have is like a transfer phase, which is quite efficient. So it's kind of um, not exactly a bootstrap, but it's the first phase which allows efficient uh, transfer. Okay, so um, maybe one more general question, like how how far do you see like how to generalize the whole? Side. I notice you also use like sort of standard credit model like central distribution protocol and and well and 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 my mean the general question is how compatible are those things? Like can I plug in another for example like central distribution protocol and try to take care of the like access control part? Uh, in, in the end I um, I think yes but um the main thing, I mean, we, are, we still have to be careful on something that basically everything like plugs together and plugs together well because uh, these um, zero knowledge proofs are compatible with everything. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you want to change something, you also have to ensure that uh, the zero knowledge layer stays compatible with it. But, uh, 
Okay. For that, yes, it's So, further questions or comments? But if not, then let's try to rest again and. Thank you for all the speakers. So that's the end of today's session. I think our general coach here has some announcements.